Do you feel digitally engaged? Do you feel data savvy? Do you feel computationally literate? Do you care about this? Are you worried about this in any sense? Do you worry about your connectivity, your access to your devices? Would, you be, would it be strange not to be able to look at your phone for an hour or for a whole day? Do you worry about being safe online? Do you worry about your data being shared? I think my work over the last um, 10 years, has, particularly in Wales, has looked at the intersection between education skills, digital infrastructure, digital economy. What does this mean for the future of Wales? But actually, what does it mean about empowering young people? But in the widest sense about the very delightful nature of all the, the wondrous things that, that digital technologies have, have provided for us over the past 10, 15, 20 years, but increasingly the massive impact that it has on our life, and increasingly the massively dangerous impact it has on our life, the, the, the worrying impact it has on our lives, also the, the unseen impact it has on our lives. And there's a real tension between it becoming a black or white piece to say technology is good or technology is bad. And it would be quite reductive in the sense of how we view or decide to say, yes, we'll do this, yes, we'll use this, or no, we'll block and lock everything. So part of my question to you today is to think about well, what do we mean when we, we're asking about someone being digitally competent? Do you think about this? Is this something you worry about? Is this something you worry about for your children, for your friends and family, for your parents, the kind of generational piece? And actually, this kind of question is, 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 is a big concern for, for governments across the world because it's the very nature of it's economically driven. We need these high-value digital skills to, to drive forward the future economy, the, the jobs of the future, what we need for now, what we might need for the next 10, 15 years. But actually, this piece around the empowerment, the, the ethical, informed, critical citizen of, the future, of now and the future, and actually, this isn't just about getting jobs. It's about society, culture, and our lived experiences online. So the idea that we differentiate between the physical world, that where we are today, it's delightful to be seeing you in person as opposed to a Zoom or a Teams call, but actually, the digital world is the real world. And actually, it's very strange that we massively separate and differentiate between the two. Algorithms pl play a huge role in our life. If you don't know what an algorithm is, then they are making decisions about you. They are not um, pure, perfect things that are fair and transparent and auditable. They can hold the biases of humans who write them. They hold the biases of the data that they work on. So actually, this could stop you getting a job. This could stop you getting a mortgage or a credit card. This could stop you getting, being eligible to, to, go, to come out of prison. How do we change the very fairness and the accountability of these things? Because it feels fairer to say, sorry, the computer said no. And increasingly, there's a, a cyber resilience piece. Our world is glued together. The world is being eaten by software. The world is glued together by different bits of digital infrastructure, and actually, it's patchy and vulnerable. It doesn't all work together as well as it probably should do. And actually, there are nefarious actors, both at the nation state level, as well as perhaps little kids in their bedroom, who are constantly probing critical national infrastructure, health and social care, utilities. This is a national security concern. So, you know, we've seen that kind of current events at the moment. And interestingly, the legislation that's passed in the UK. So we think about this in other contexts and jurisdictions, but has anyone heard of the Investigative Powers Act? Would this ever be a doorstep issue if a politician came to your door and said, I'm concerned about what happens with my digital data. I'm concerned about which UK government agencies can monitor my online communications and can request data about me at any time. Does anyone know? Does it, is anyone worried about that? Is it under fair judicial oversight? How long have we got to talk about non-conventional non sex acts? But why are we legislating for morality through some of this work? So you could have a separate, you could have a separate discussion about um, who or why people access pornography online, but it is legal. So why on earth would we want to create a database of all the people who want to watch pornography in the UK? Who would be in charge of that? Who would that be a really good data set for? That's a bit of a problem if you want to blackmail people. So yes, fine, it is about proving identity. Yes, it is fine about protecting children from stuff online. Is that not an educational issue to talk about healthy sex and relationship education rather than just blocking stuff online? Because 
children have unrestricted access to the internet at home. We sometimes block this stuff in schools. Parents might not have the digital skills to support and develop healthy and safety behaviors online, and thus healthy and safety interactions in the real world. What about the, 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 the wonderful world of social media? Surely you're all following me on Twitter. Thank you very much. Um, but this is, the, this is the world we live in, the way in which we interact and, and communicate. We can have friends across the entire world. When governments try and stop access to social media, it's never a good thing. Why wouldn't you want to hear about what your citizens have got to say about you online? Why are you worried about scrutiny and discussion? But however, we know this is massively shaping public discourse and dialogue. We've seen this over the past five, 10 years. US presidential elections, EU exit, COVID-19 vaccines, conspiracy theories abound. You cannot, the very nature of evidence is being questioned and justified in the sense of what website do you get your news from? Who do you follow online? It's a curated feed. Who, where do you get your information from? Where's the canonical source of truth? Or does it align to your political ideologies? And actually then, you would then push back about our elected representatives. If a minister or a government official says we should ban encryption, they should be laughed out of the room. You try banning gravity. Encryption is a mathematical artifact. So the world, our digital world, relies on having secure and safe communications. And there are no magic back doors for the good guys that the bad guys can't also exploit. So you weaken the system for one, for one person, you weak it for everyone. So our world relies, our economy relies on, uh, the, the whole intrinsic nature of our communications rely on having trusted communications. But do any of you worry about your, or your digital communications being, being monitored online? You could say I've got nothing to hide. Maybe. Um, but you know, what does that mean? What, uh, would you be concerned if, if all your posts that you put in the post box was routinely scanned and, and, and stored for perpetuity? Well. What happens to your emails? Does it matter if you're emailing someone who's not a British citizen? Does it matter if it goes via a server that's not in the UK? These are the, this is the very nature and the, the sort of topology of the, our internet infrastructure that we don't know anything about, and these things happen, and it allows our internet communication to be, to be monitored. Then you could say, well, actually, the benefit of all these technologies coming together, it makes it really easy for us to do you know, intelligent systems, connected infrastructure, smart cities, we can monitor stuff, we can reduce crime. What's the issue of having facial recognition databases of all your citizens? Does it work for every type of citizen? Are you able to do things with certain types of your citizens? Are you able to target your citizens to do specific things? This becomes deeply problematic. And actually, just because you have interesting data sets, I'm a computer scientist, I love data, I love doing stuff with data, I love doing interesting, gaining insight from data, but just because you've got a massive database of people and their faces and perhaps their sexual orientation, probably ethically dubious to then think about, can we predict whether someone is uh, their sexual orientation from the way they look? How could that be misused? Who might want to misuse these technologies? So again, that, the piece around just because you can, the question is whether you should, and as soon as it happens, you've lost control of these technologies. And this, so this is a video that came out uh, last month. And essentially, you might have heard of, of deep fake technology. So essentially, if any of you, if there's enough audio, video, pictures of you on the internet, it is trivially easy to get you to say or do anything. There are very simple algorithms and applications that you can do to plug in enough pictures and audio of you to get you to say the most reprehensible and disgusting things online, and you can change the very nature of what we, look, what we mean by evidence and proof. This person said this. Well, I can fake a video very easily and show that Barack Obama said that, because there's lots of video and audio of him online. So what does this mean in the burden of proof in a court of law? What does this mean in the sense of shaping public discourse when you know, we know that things like a, a, a social media storm can happen in, in 24 hours because a politician is supposed to have said this or a celebrity has said this, it's gone. You've lost control of this stuff. So what does it mean? How are we developing those critical kind of media literacy skills to better understand the world in which we live? And obviously, COVID-19 has had a massive impact on stuff. So the wonders of being online, to be able to flip to online learning and teaching, to be able to kind of work from home if possible, and actually 
what about the data? What about our underlying digital infrastructure? What about the providers we rely on, the major four US tech companies that largely provides most of our kind of digital software and digital infrastructure, our dependency on these companies? Are you locked into Apple? Are you locked into Google? Are you locked into a Microsoft world? Do you always get your stuff from Amazon? Is this the very nature of how, are you worried about your data kind of shifting between the two or the aggregation, the confluence, the sharing of data across these different systems? Are you worried about what can be inferred about you to sell you more products? Because that's essentially what this is aiming to do. Data is not the new oil. This is the phrase that you might hear all the time. It's not. Data is the new glitter. It gets everywhere. It's deeply problematic to remove. You can't delete this data. And actually, you know, you know, there are s severe consequences from putting glitter and using it in certain s situations. So actually, data is not this wondrous thing. It's deep, it can be deeply problematic. What do we do with all this data that's around? It's great. It's, you know, the idea that we can make our lives so much easier. You log into something. Everything seamlessly works. It makes your life so easy. You can speak to people. You can share documents. You can navigate across all these platforms. What's happening with the data? Is that for the benefit of you as a citizen? Or is that for the benefit of a major US technology company? And actually, these are kind of wider questions to say, what are the ethical, moral, legal, professional kind of consequences of some of these things? In the sense of saying, I can write software to do lots of interesting things. Is it, the right, is it right? Should it be done? Should it be allowed? Should there be more regulation of this kind of stuff? Should there be consequences from writing software? What happens when an autonomous vehicle crashes? Who's responsible? Is it the the manufacturer of the car, or is it the engineer who wrote the piece of software that was the radar detection algorithm and that didn't quite work in suboptimal light conditions? Where's the accountability there? So that big question we're starting to ask now is, we're cracking this in an education and skills piece. You know, some of my work over the last um, five to 10 years in Wales, we have a new curriculum for Wales starting in, in September. You know, Digital competence is, is at the core of the new curriculum. It's one of the statutory cross-curricular skills of literacy and numeracy. We're going to crack this in a, in a formal curriculum setting. How long that takes to, work, to, to change is, is open. You know, that's, that's the big open question. We need competent and capable practitioners to be able to do this. But then there's that wider piece around young people are confident. Are they always capable to do this? Are they fluent and transferable? Can they change and shift and shape their digital skills and navigate this digital, this rapidly changing digital world, what about their parents? What about their grandparents? What does this mean for a wider societal cultural piece? What about if it's in multiple languages? What happens if you speak Welsh and other languages? The, the internet is not just Western English. So actually, the different parts of the internet and the different types of interactions and, and, and applications and things that happen online, Digital competence is multi-valued, and it is about criticality. So it's this empowerment piece is around, we want ethical, empowered, and informed young people. Actually, we want ethical, empowered, informed future citizens of Wales and the world. But actually, it's that criti the criticality piece is around, do you know what's happening with your data? Are you able to make an informed decision? Can you say no to stuff? Is it possible to say no? I don't want those cookies. Is it possible to say, no, I don't want to share my data, but still use those applications? Or are you so intrinsically locked into this stuff, it's impossible, and you've kind of given up? It's just the reality of our digital world. But again, there's that point around saying, it does make our lives better. And actually, it's not just about getting kids programming and coding, but remember, the digital world is constructed and built. So if you don't understand how that works, then you are, we, are doing young, we are doing people a disservice to understand this, that you know, have a little bit of creativity in a digital world makes a massive difference. So I don't expect everyone to be a programmer, but to understand that programming allows you to be creative and innovative and to then understand the rules and the norms of this new digital world is massively empowering. And it allows you to understand that algorithms do make decisions about your life and you can influence them in good and perhaps bad ways. And online friends are real friends. The idea that just because they don't live in the same village or the same town or the same area, they're not real friends. They are very, they are, that's how our world works. We're multimodal, multi-platform. You can have friends across the, the entirety of the world and speak to them in different languages from different cultures, and they are the same friends as the ones who live down the street. So remember, I remember when Netflix came for the mail, 
And actually, this massively implies, or kind of is a good example of the, this huge shift we've seen over the last 10, 15 years. And that will continue to be disruptive and to change the way in which we are interact, we're communicated, we're educated, how we live. But actually, is it citizen-centered? Is it about developing critical, enabled, capable, data-savvy, computational literate future citizens of Wales and the world? And that's my call to arms. Are we doing that? Are we doing that well enough now? And are, will we continue to do that well enough in the future? I urge you all to think about that. Thank you very much. Oh. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.